Well, it's Friday, November 18th at um, 12 o'clock, and I'm home alone. And I just got back from my appointment with my oncologist, and it was a rough one. Um, I passed out <laughs> from information overload as she told me everything that I was about to go through um, with the chemotherapy starting this Monday. I'll be in for eight hours on Monday and eight hours on Tuesday getting some of the toughest medicine known to man. There's a, a boatload of symptoms that I could have and am going to have, including some of the worst things I've ever heard, like throwing up blood and all this other stuff. And I don't know what happened, but I felt extremely overwhelmed. I... um my blood pressure dropped to nothing. I started sweating and I just blanked out. And when I came to, I started crying and talking about how I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to be strong and get through this. And I got home and I'm by myself and I just started asking God why I do want to be strong and I've always considered myself a very strong person but this seems like too much this really does seem like too much and um, I remember thinking a couple of months ago somebody told me oh you know the Lord never gives you more than you can handle he never gives you more than you can handle and just for all of you who've ever used that that's not true <laughs> that's actually not biblical um, there's not a verse in scripture that says the Lord doesn't give us more than we can handle. He does tell us that he will give us the grace and the wisdom to get by with whatever he gives us, but he most certainly is going to push us to the limit of our capabilities. And as I was crying out to him and on my knees and just uh, mad and I'm, of course I'm mad and he's mad and I'm scared, but I came to 1 Peter chapter 4, and this is totally God, and I'm not this girl who thinks that you can just open the Bible and that God leads you there, but today he did because he knew that I was needing him so desperately, and it says this, and this is a miracle because I didn't have any markings here, I haven't been reading this, he led me straight to this passage today, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, and it says, So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. You have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties and their terrible worship of idols. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So they slander you, but remember that they will have to face God, who will judge everyone, both the living and the dead. That is why the good news was preached. And then it goes on to say, The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers over a multitude of sins. And um, I just was blown away by this because I love this part where it says that when we suffer physically, it's, it's like... We don't want to chase our own desires anymore. When you get to the point physically where you're push, pushed so physically to the brink of devastation, which is where I feel right now, I can't even comprehend it, what I'm about, my body physically is about to go through, you have no other choice. You are left with no other choice than to push into Jesus because he's your only hope. And I love how it says that you don't want to spend your days chasing your evil thoughts. I don't want to. I don't want to get up anymore and just watch TV. I mean, all the stupid shows that I've been uh, watching over the past couple of weeks, I don't want to watch those anymore. All the time that I've been spending on the internet and, and at, at the office working when I could be home playing with my kids and making supper and dinner, I don't want to do any of those things anymore. I want to focus on my family and all the things um, of God. And it just it just blew me away. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own evil desires 
but you will be anxious to do the will of God. And that is the cry of my heart through this chemo treatment. That through every single day that the people sitting next to me will see that I am anxious to do the will of God through this horrible um, treatment. So will you pray for me on Monday and Tuesday of next week as I start my treatments and go in? Will you pray that um, my body will react, not have, will not have an allergic reaction to the treatment that um, I will have just the normal symptoms? Will you just pray for peace, that I will just have an overwhelming sense of peace and that I will be able to take whatever comes my way? And I will really cherish those prayers right now as I feel mentally, um, emotionally, and physically exhausted. And um, I do feel that God is, is pushing me beyond what I think that I can bear, but I know in my heart that um, it's only going to allow me to experience Him at a place where very few people get to go. And so I praise Him for that. And I hope you're having a great day.